everybody. Ryan here with the Louisiana Academy of Performing Arts today with another Lanyap lesson. We're talking about improvising on the guitar and kind of like getting started with it, where to begin. And one of my suggestions for beginning to improvise is starting with the blues. Why? Well, the blues tends to have a lot of crossover in song forms and um, scale choices. They usually tend to stick to just a few types. Um, at the most rudimentary levels. So it's a great place to start off because if you learn the 12 bar blues form and you learn the pentatonic minor scale, you can already play a huge amount of music. There's so many different artists that use the same 12 bar blues form. And one of the most popular keys in the blues is E because you know the blues is a guitar player's genre for a, a little bit. You know Everybody loves the blues, but specifically for guitar, um, the key of E works out really well. And when you learn to play blues, the first scale you'll probably encounter is the E minor pentatonic. And I'm gonna show that scale to you today. And um, the scale goes E, oh, I will note as well, I, my, my guitar is currently tuned to E flat standard. So in, uh, I'm speaking in terms of E because most of your guys' guitars will be in tune to E. So, but if you play along, you'll notice that the notes sound a little bit different. My guitar's a little lower. But I'm gonna speak out as if it's an E. So we have E, we have G, a, B, and D, and that's basically the entire scale. It's called a pentatonic scale, and if you know your Latin roots, penta stands for five. Tonic can be like, you know, you think of it as tone or sound, so five sounds, but they have five notes in the scale. Again, it's E, G, A, B, and D. So if I continue that pattern going up the entire fretboard, or at least in the first position, I can have another E here, another G, another A, another B, another D, and then another E. And then if I want, I have another G as well. So what I've done is I've played the entirety of the E minor pentatonic scale in the first position. There are more notes, I can go up even higher, but I have to climb up the net. But for now, we're just gonna stay in this position and play the entire scale, so again. So these are the notes that we have to choose from when beginning to create melodic lines and improvisations over the song. Um, so the thing about the pentatonic scale is because it's kind of a, a scale with less tones in it, if you look at the tones over an entire octave, if I were to play the scale up the string, you'll notice. that unlike the major and minor scales that we play, that the pentatonic scale has no half steps in them, right? If we look at all the tones again, we'll see that I don't move a single fret at a time. I'm always skipping over one or more frets. And what that does is that actually helps weed out some of the notes from the original minor scale that can kind of be clashy notes, right? Whenever you, like they work under certain chords but not under others. So if you're ever playing um, a song in E minor using your E minor scale and you hit some sour notes, it just has to do with some of those half-step notes. Those notes can kind of be a little weird. So when you play pentatonic scales, it takes those notes out of the equation. It kind of makes it to where, as long as you're playing a note in the scale, it can probably sound good. There's almost no bad notes. So whenever you're playing with that scale, you can start to just arrange the notes in all types of different new ways. Think of it like this. I like to look at the notes in a scale kind of like an artist's palette if you will, each note being like a color on the palette, right? So right now I'm just kind of just going through the colors one by one, like red, green, blue. So to, in order to get more, you know, emotion, feeling, and better sounding lines, I basically try to think of interesting ways to kind of go about the notes. I'll skip around, uh, maybe I'll go up, and then switch directions, or skip around. All the, um, what I like to call like the fine detail, right? The um, kind of comes with practice, like, because you just have these notes, and what, what, what's the difference between playing these notes and playing a solo like you heard me play earlier? Well, inside of those, I, I use a lot of guitar principles, like pull-offs, hammer-ons, sometimes I'll string together hammer-ons and pull-offs. Right? And also things called bends. Now, what happens when you bend a note 
is that you're actually raising the note, you're bringing it up. And the problem with bending and learning to bend is you have to learn to bend in tune. Because if I bend this note and I don't quite go to the right tone or go in between tones, it sounds pretty bad. So I'm thinking of this scale and I'm just basically using these different principles to kind of go from note to note, whether I hammer on or pull off from one note to the next, or if I want to get to this note, I can bend up to it, right? Another thing you can add is vibrato. Vibrato is just an idea where you kind of wiggle the string and give it that little bit of that note, that wobbly sound you hear singers doing. Um, you can also slide, right? Um, right, so I can go from this note to this note, or I can slide to it as well. And a lot of juices in there too. So if I wanted to just stick with this, these notes, uh, to play that line, I'd have to go something like, right? Or, right, if I play that. So whenever you're thinking of a scale, try to find ways to get to the notes in the scale besides just going to the next place maybe. You can also learn how to play the scale up a string, just like I did earlier. Right? Sometimes I may just find just the next note up, right? I might leave the scale just to find the next note, like the next open string, right? And come back. That helps make your uh, melodic ideas a little bit more interesting. So great ways to practice a scale. Well, you can practice it ascending, descending. And then you can practice what I call melodic patterns. So if, if you think of the scale, if I play it again from lowest tone to highest tone, I think of each note kind of like the rung on a ladder, right? Kind of like each step. So here's my lowest point, right? And I can climb up the ladder all the way to the top. But this is going one rung at a time. Something I could do is maybe do a little pattern. Maybe I can start at the top of the ladder, right? And instead of just descending the ladder one rung at a time, Maybe I'll start at the top rung. I'll skip past the next rung. I'll skip down a note, over that note, and then I'll come back to the note I skipped over. So think of it as like two steps down, one step up. And that's a cool melodic pattern. That sounds interesting, and you can incorporate that into any kind of song you want to do. So here, here's how it sounds. Same thing, but going up, starting at the bottom rung, skipping up to, and then going down a step. That's a melodic pattern. Maybe another pattern I can do is, I like to call this one, stepping up one, two, three, three steps up, and then a skip down. So we go up the scale, up a rung, up a rung, up a rung, but then we're gonna skip down a couple rungs, right? Down to here. So it's through practice with all these different patterns and I basically, what I'm, I'm programming the muscle memory for all these little patterns and when, I'm, when a song is going on, when I'm improvising, I'm drawing on that knowledge. By practicing these different patterns, I'm sort of expanding my scale vocabulary in a way. So as, as the band plays on, I'll have more and more things to say, more and more ideas that I can incorporate. Um, my last tip for improvisation um, also has to do with, you know, some of you that may sing or at least know that you can match pitches, right? So if you have the ability to play a tone and kind of sing it, and if you kind of mess around singing in the shower and the radio or whatever, you can actually let your inner singer determine what you want to play. Because, you know, when you approach scale systematically like that and, and look and do patterns, that's great. But if that's all you do, you'll end up kind of like always playing things like that. So another great way to kind of get new fresh ideas when you're improvising is to kind of sing stuff out. 
if you can. Like if you if you can even do it on a basic small level, um, just have the background music going on and try to just like scat if you know what that is or sing out a line. And a lot of times you can find interesting lines that you wouldn't approach or play on the guitar unless you hadn't had the like like the line already in your head. So when I used to improvise, if I hear this chord, I might hear like la ah 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 something like that or uh oh uh, 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 uh. right so it's it's kind of like when you start to get the, your inner musician and your instrument and start to connect the two and start to think of, think like that right the, the instrument becomes an extension of you and um, and like if you get up to that level that's that's improv baby that's how it goes <laughs> you know we, we just we're all thinking of a background as kind of like a musical context and it's like a conversation. We're, we're just finding things to put in to add to the conversation that fits the context really well and makes it more interesting. And um, again, if you watch my Lanyap lessons, I'm always open to questions. So however you want to reach out, if, if you know, you're always welcome to join our blues ensemble if you're an adult and we can do more personalized things one-on-one. -on -one. But I think that's gonna be it for today. So thanks again so much for watching. This has been Ryan with Lapa and our Lanyap lessons. Have a nice day.